Imagine being hated for no reason. Picture yourself being treated unjustly just because of your skin color, race, or ethnicity. The emotional trauma and pain, it's beyond comprehension. This is the harsh reality for countless African Americans. In this video, we're diving deep into the unthinkable thing Daryl Davis did. We've got a smorgasbord of lessons to uncover. Without further ado, let's dive straight in. Let's go back in time to 1968, a pivotal year for civil rights in America. In Belmont, Massachusetts, a young black boy named Daryl Davis had just moved with his family. Daryl found himself one of only two black kids in his entire school. He joined the Club Scouts, and one day, during a parade commemorating the ride of Paul Revere, something shocking happened. As he marched with his fellow scouts, he began getting hit by bottles, soda pop cans, rocks, and debris from a small group of white spectators on the sidewalk. Daryl was the only target, and it wasn't until his mother and scout leaders rushed over to shield him that he realized the danger he was in. When he got home and his mom and dad were cleaning his wounds, he asked them why he was attacked and they told him it was because he was hated for being black. And at just the age of 10, Daryl formed a question in his mind, and that question was, how can people hate me when you don't even know me? That question sparked something profound within Daryl Davis, a quest for understanding, for reconciliation, for humanity. In pursuit of an answer, Daryl Davis would embark on a daring journey with members of the Ku Klux Klan also called KKK, one of the most notorious hate groups in American history. Daryl Davis would later do something seemingly impossible. It will challenge everything you thought you knew about racism. What could that be? To uncover this shocking twist, you'll need to stick with us until the very end of this video. Before we discuss the unbelievable thing Daryl Davis did, let's talk about the Ku Klux Klan. Who are they? What are their ideologies? What are their aims, objectives, and missions? Let's find out. You see, the Ku Klux Klan, commonly known as the KKK, stands as a symbol of American white supremacy, embodying the ideologies of far-right extremism and hate. Historian Fergus Bordowicz describes the Klan as the first organized terror movement in American history. Throughout its existence, the Klan has targeted various groups, including African Americans, Jews, and Catholics. Notably, there have been three distinct iterations of the Klan, each operating within different historical contexts. The first Klan emerged in the late 1860s, led by Confederate veterans who unleashed violence upon politically active black individuals and their supporters in the southern states. The second incarnation arose in the late 1910s, introducing tactics such as cross burnings and the donning of white hooded robes. By the 1920s, the Klan boasted a nationwide membership numbering in the millions, representing a broad cross-section of the native-born white populace. The third clan materialized around 1950, primarily in response to the burgeoning civil rights movement, resorting to acts of murder and bombings to suppress activists advocating for civil rights. Despite their temporal and tactical differences, all three clans shared a common goal, the purification of American society. Consequently, they are universally recognized as far-right extremist organizations, now let's get back to the man, Daryl Davis. Picture this, a young maestro, his fingers dancing across the ivory keys of a piano, his soul entwined with the rhythms of blues and rock and roll. Daryl Davis, a prodigious talent, honed his craft at Howard University, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Music degree, a testament to his dedication and skill. Yet, his journey was not confined to the hallowed halls of academia. It extended far beyond, into the realms of societal transformation. It is here, in the realm of race relations, that Daryl Davis's true opus unfolds. A maestro not only of music but also of compassion, empathy, and understanding. His journey all began one night during a break between performances with a particular bar called the Silver Dollar Lounge. Daryl was 25 years old. A man approached Daryl and remarked that this was the first time he had ever seen a black man play piano like Jerry Lee Lewis. With grace and humility, Daryl shares the roots of his music, tracing its lineage back to the black blues and boogie-woogie pianists who laid the foundation for rock and roll itself. But the man remains unconvinced, his skepticism a barrier to understanding. 
Even when Daryl reveals that Jerry Lee Lewis himself acknowledged the black origins of his style, the man's disbelief persists like a stubborn shadow cast by the light of truth. Then the man drops a bombshell that reverberates through the room. He said that he had never sat down with a black guy before and had a drink. And Daryl curiously asked, why? After much hesitation, the man finally said he was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Daryl burst out laughing, thinking the man was joking. But after the man showed him his clan card, Daryl stopped laughing and knew that the man was serious. Then Daryl asked himself, how was it possible that he was sitting with a member of the clan who was friendly? Then it dawned on Daryl that it was the music that brought them together. The man even told Daryl to call him and let him know any time he was to return to the Silver Dollar Lounge. Daryl Davis drew his conclusion that the fact that a Klansman and a black person could sit down at the same table and enjoy the same music shows that you need to know someone before you can hate the person. But Klan members hated black people without even knowing them. Now, at this point in Daryl's life, a lot was going through his mind. But his next step of action would shock you. Daryl did the unthinkable. Any ears hearing what he did surely would tingle. Do you want to know what he did? I'll tell you in a moment. Stick with me. Daryl made the daring decision that he would meet with more KKK members. Yes, hear me right. He even went as far as attending their rallies. Now this was dangerous. He could get killed. But Daryl wasn't even thinking about his safety at this point. All he wanted was to make a change. Daryl Davis began scheduling meetings with Ku Klux Klan leaders and members. But before Daryl Davis did this, he had to prepare what he was going to say. So he studied the Ku Klux Klan from their belief systems and ideologies to their behaviors. He learned just about everything about them. Daryl Davis even knew more about the Ku Klux Klan than most of its active members. So every meeting he went into, he went in armed, not with a weapon, but with knowledge. Daryl Davis asserted that after meeting several Klan members, he realized they respected him because he knew much about their organization and their belief system. They didn't like him at the first meeting, but rather respected him. Because of this respect, many clan members allowed him to meet with them again. Now let's discuss some of Daryl Davis's encounters with members and leaders of the Ku Klux Klan. Are you ready? Let's delve in. First, Daryl Davis managed to get the phone number and address of a powerful member of the Ku Klux Klan, Roger Kelly. The individual who gave him the phone number and address of Mr. Roger Kelly warned Daryl not to go to the house of Mr. Roger. So Daryl had his white secretary call and set up an interview with Mr. Roger. He knew that if he made the call, Mr. Roger might find out he was black. So the interview was scheduled to take place in a motel room. Daryl gave his white secretary, Mary, some money to get some soda, put it in an ice bucket. He wanted to be hospitable and offer Mr. Kelly a cold beverage. Daryl had no idea what this man was going to do when he saw him. Was he going to freak out because he was a black man or was he going to attack him? Daryl was so scared. Pause for a moment and picture yourself in this situation. You just invited a man who hated black people to an interview without him knowing that you the interviewer are black. This situation was tough for Daryl, and while he was still lost in thought of what would happen, the doorbell rang. His secretary opens the door, and Mr. Kelly's bodyguard known as the Grand Nighthawk walks in wearing military camouflage. He has the Ku Klux Klan insignia on the camouflage, and has a semi-automatic handgun in his holster. Mr. Kelly was right behind him. Immediately the Nighthawk and Mr. Kelly see Daryl Davis. They immediately freeze in shock. They thought they had entered the wrong room or they were ambushed. Then Daryl Davis boldly stepped forward with his hands in the air indicating he didn't have a weapon on him. He walked towards Mr. Kelly and introduced himself as the interviewer. Mr. Kelly wasn't convinced and asked for his identification, which he showed to him. The interview commenced, and Mr. Kelly answered only a few questions. For a majority of questions asked, he'll just say he doesn't want to answer that question. After one hour into the interview, there was a startling noise in the room that scared everyone. They didn't know what made the noise but assumed it to be a threatening noise. At this point, the look on Mr. Kelly's face is frightening, and Daryl's mind starts racing. The thought going through his mind is that Mr. Kelly could kill him at the slightest provocation. He wasn't armed, his secretary was not armed. The only person armed was the bodyguard of Mr. Kelly, the Nighthawk. Then Daryl Davis's secretary, 
Mary, who was sitting on top of the dresser, realized what happened that caused the noise. The ice in the bucket beside her had melted, and the cans of soda fell down the ice. That's exactly what made the noise, and then it made it again, and they all began laughing at how ignorant they all were. At the end of the interview, Daryl thanked Roger Kelly for his time, they shook hands, and surprisingly Roger Kelly said he'd love to keep in touch with Daryl. But Daryl Davis drew a lesson from this encounter or interview with Roger Kelly. The lesson was that ignorance breeds fear. Human beings fear those things they don't understand, and if they don't keep that fear in check, that fear in turn will breed hatred. If that hatred is not kept in check, that hatred in turn will breed destruction. Humans want to destroy those things that they hate. Daryl Davis began inviting Mr. Kelly to some of his shows where he'll be performing. And most times, Mr. Kelly would come over to Daryl's house with his bodyguard, the Nighthawk. They'd have lunch and dinner at Daryl's house. After a couple of years, Roger Kelly began coming down to Daryl Davis's house without his bodyguard. He trusted Daryl Davis so much that he felt safe with him and had no need for the bodyguard anymore. Now this was shocking. A member of the Ku Klux Klan was friends with a black man. But what happened next was even more shocking. It was jaw-dropping. Do you want to know what happened? Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging, I'll tell you right away. Roger Kelly didn't stop at being friends with Daryl, but began inviting him to the Klan rallies. This caused widespread controversy. But Mr. Kelly asserted that his friendship with Daryl would never change his belief systems because they were cemented in his mind. But after Daryl Davis released his book, Clandestine Relationships, a black man's odyssey in the Ku Klux Klan, things changed. After Mr. Kelly read the book, he began questioning some of the Ku Klux Klan belief systems, and after a while, he did something unbelievable. Roger Kelly renounced his Klan membership and gave his Klan robe to Daryl Davis. Many Klan members accused Daryl Davis of changing the mindset of Roger Kelly. But Daryl disagreed, he said that Mr. Kelly decided that he was going to change. He said that he was only a friend of Mr. Kelly and their friendship started with conversation and communication. Let's now talk about another encounter of Daryl Davis with another Ku Klux Klan member. Daryl Davis once had a Klan member sitting in his car in the passenger seat. The Klan member then said that all black people have within them a gene that makes them violent. Daryl immediately turned to him and said, Wait a minute. I'm as black as anybody you've ever seen. I have never done a carjacking or a drive-by. How do you explain that? Now, the man didn't even pause for a second to think. He just said, your gene is latent. It hasn't come out yet. At this point, Daryl was dumbfounded. How can he argue and change the mindset of this man? Daryl was thinking while driving. The clan member observing the silence of Daryl had a smirk on his face. Looking at Daryl, he said, you have no response. And after another minute of thinking, Daryl Davis used his point of reference and said, well, we all know that all white people have a gene within them that makes them a serial killer. The man immediately said loudly, what do you mean? And Daryl quietly responded, well, name three black serial killers you know. The man thought about it. He could not do it. Then Daryl Davis immediately named not just three, but over four white serial killers, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Charles Manson, John Wayne Gacy, and more. Then Daryl told the Klan member that he was a serial killer. The man said almost immediately that he had never killed anybody. Daryl Davis then told him, your gene is latent, it hasn't come out yet. He said, well that's stupid. Daryl told him he was right, but what he told him earlier wasn't more stupid than what he just said. Then the man got very, very quiet and changed the subject. Five months later, based on that conversation, he left the Klan and gave his robe to Daryl. Daryl Davis has met many Klan members and had conversations with them, and what he noticed was that Klan members feel that if a person is not white, that person is inferior. They believe that black people have smaller brains and are incapable of higher achievement. But when Daryl engages in a conversation with them, they begin to let go of their ideology. In a recent interview, Darley Davis explained this further using an illustration. He said, when two enemies are talking, they're not fighting. It's when the talking ceases that the ground becomes fertile for violence. If you spend five minutes with your worst enemy, it doesn't have to be about race, it could be about anything. You will find that you both have something in common. 
As you build upon those commonalities, you're forming a relationship, and as you build about that relationship, you're forming a friendship. That's what would happen. Thus, Daryl Davis didn't convert anybody. They saw the light, changed their ideologies, and converted themselves. Let's talk about another encounter Daryl Davis had with the Ku Klux Klan members. This one is very unique because he faced a whole family who were members of the Klan and had hatred for blacks. Both daughters were Klan members, their mother was, and their father was. Sadly, their father got into some sort of trouble and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. When Daryl Davis heard this, he called the mother, Tina. She was rude to him, but didn't let that discourage him. He offered to drive the girls to see their father at the prison. No Klan member had ever offered to do this. In an interview, Tina said that she and her husband were only destroying their daughters, planting the seed of hatred in them for no reason. Over the years, Daryl Davis has influenced the decisions of over 250 members of the Ku Klux Klan, and they have renounced their membership. His story is indeed one with a lot of lessons. Daryl, a globetrotter who has traversed 57 countries across six continents, stands as a prominent figure in the realm of race relations and conflict resolution. Revered by the U.S. State Department for his expertise, he is frequently called upon to lead programs addressing similar issues in diverse corners of the world. Through his endeavors, Daryl has honed a remarkable approach to bridging divides and fostering understanding among adversaries. His encounters with individuals entrenched in white supremacist ideology have become the stuff of legend, sparking inspiration among audiences both domestically and internationally. Armed with his compelling narratives, Daryl imparts invaluable lessons, empowering his listeners to confront their fears, challenge their biases, and embrace the commonalities that bind humanity together. His presentations catalyze personal growth, encouraging individuals to navigate the complexities of diversity with grace and compassion, thereby enriching their own lives and leaving a positive imprint on the world around them. As we wrap up today's video, Let's not forget that human beings often gravitate towards the familiar, finding comfort in the known and the similar. However, when faced with the unfamiliar or the different, fear can take root, potentially escalating into a deeper, more entrenched hatred. While it is true that not everyone will be open to change, there remains a glimmer of hope in the willingness of some individuals to engage in dialogue. These conversations present an opportunity to sow seeds of understanding and compassion, even in the face of entrenched prejudice and hostility. Though there may always be those who cling to their hatred until their dying breath, the act of simply sitting down and engaging in conversation can serve as a beacon of possibility, offering a chance to foster empathy and bridge divides. Now this video isn't just about shedding light on hate or racism, it's a call to action. It's a call to reevaluate ourselves. Let's use this awareness as a catalyst for change, an opportunity to unite and tackle hate and racism on a global scale and work towards a world free from discrimination. This brings us to the end of this informative video. Now the spotlight is on you. Do you have something that's on your mind you want to share? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation alive. Until next time, keep your opinions rolling and stay tuned for more jaw-dropping videos. If you find this video interesting, kindly click the like and subscribe buttons to get notifications every time we upload new videos don't forget to turn on the notification bell i appreciate your time and hope to see you in the next video